But it's better to sell. It's not a problem. You didn't come into. You can make a sandwich of two pieces of rye bread with a matzah in between. You know. <laughs> then for sure you may come out see. What? One sec. Tomorrow afternoon, yes, if you want to eat matzah tomorrow, it should be eaten in the morning. Because there is a halacha question about making hamotzi Friday afternoon, because then you're not going to be able to eat the meal Friday night properly. Now in Shechonarach it says, in Hilcha Shabbos, that if it's a sudas mitzvah, like a bris meal, a pinya ben, then you can make, preferably as in the morning, you can make it later if you have to. So if somebody wants to eat matzah tomorrow, as tomorrow's day for Pesach Sheni, they should eat preferably in the morning. What? Gebrats? Can you have gebrats? <laughs> yeah, you can have gebrats. You get the matzah wet. You can, um, you can put cream cheese on the matzah with avocado. It's a special with, yeah. with jelly, by the way. Hello. You can put peanut butter in jelly. In the yeah. I just, I don't know what? If you're having, if shh, if you're eating matzah, shh, the custom is b'chal. When you're supposed to eat, eating is a, a kazayas. So if you're eating matzah for Pesach Sheni, you should eat not a little nibble. You should eat uh, an ounce, an ounce of matzah. Even if you're eating other bread, but if you're eating matzah, you should eat a kazayas of matzah. To minig. Gebrax? It depends how oily the peanut butter is. Depends which company you use. Really? What? But peanut butter is kidney, no? Yeah, but tomorrow you can have with chametz. Maybe kidney with not chametz, yeah, whatever. Okay, yeah, let's get back to where we were up to before all this. <laughs> I said you could, I didn't say you should. He was asking what can you eat, he was asking can you eat chametz and matzah together? So I said you could if you want to make a sandwich with matzah. There's a Gemara, the Gemara says, the Bavloi, the people from Bavl, the Gemara says tipshoi hava, they were fools. The achle nama benama. The Gemara says that the people from Bavl, which is now Iraq, they used to, they were fools because they used to eat bread with bread. Normally you eat bread with something else. You don't eat bread and bread. So Gemara said they were foolish people because they had bread with bread. So if you make a sandwich of bread and matzah, then you're a fool because you're eating bread with bread. You can do whatever you want, guys, as long as it's kosher. Let's get back to Bishalakum. Okay. Okay, next. Um, now we're learning yesterday about pas akum and pas pauter. Pas akum means bread that a non-Jew baked for you privately, individually, not as a company. So halachically, the rabbis forbade it. You're not allowed to eat that because the chacham didn't want the third, the rabbanon didn't want Jews and goyim to assimilate. So they would say you can't eat bread baked by a non-Jew. But if it's a company, it's called pas pauter. We learned yesterday that that is technically allowed if it's a better bread or you can get regular what's called pas yisro. So pas pauter halachically is technically, that's why we were discussing yesterday all the kashrus organizations, the OU, the OK, the Chovke, sometimes they're pas yisro. the OU generally does not guarantee pas yisro. the OK sometimes, the Chovke sometimes, uh, but generally speaking the OU doesn't. So again, it's pas pauter, and the same thing would apply to cookies. If you buy cookies that have a kosher, they have an OU or whatever, so again, they're pas pauter, so logically you're allowed to eat it. Some people are machme, it's better to be stricter to eat only uh, cookies that, that was, the, the fire was turned down by the Jew. Does the Jew turn on the oven? We learned, if it, yesterday we were discussing, that if the Jew turns on the oven or even throws a piece of wood into the fire, to add some, or this, to stir something, does something in the in the process. No, but privately, yeah. If if a Jew does, then it's not pas halkim anymore. What? Is it better to toast pas palter? 
Uh, I, I, I know what you're talking about. So that's discussed. Dr. Tshuva talks about this. Other poskim talk about this. If something is already baked and you bake it more, does that take away from the paspalter aspect? So there are poskim that say that if you can't, if you don't get pasi so, you should do that to the paspalter because it helps a little bit. Because, but the problem is, it's edible as is. There are certain things, there are certain, I don't want to get into the whole issue, practical food issues, but there's a lot of food baked stuff that's like par baked. It's not ready to use, okay? So then you have to bake it. Let's say it's three quarters baked and you have to finish baking it. So that's for sure good. It's possibly so because you're, you're, doing, you're finishing the baking. Sometimes things are edible the way they are. They're edible the way they are. There's certain uh, frozen eclairs, frozen pastries. They, they tell you to heat it up in a, in a toaster oven just to crispen it up a little bit, but technically they're edible as is. So then it's not, it's not so simple that that's, that that's, I'll give you an example. There's even pie crusts. No pie crusts, sir? No. Good. Pizza. Pie crusts that have, let's say, an OU. Some of them they say ready to eat. That means you put something in it, the filling, whatever, and technically, yeah, you bake it a little bit, but technically they're ready to eat. So that's a problem that's not past your throw. But if they're not ready to eat, you have to bake it even for, to make it edible to eat, and that's what, how it's made that you do that to, to eat it, so then that would be fine. Then there's not a problem with pas palta or pas hakum. Because then it's made for the Jew to finish baking and then it would be good. There are opinions that hold, but the Samachlik, many of can disagree with it. We learned in Hilchah Shabbos, if you remember, there's baking after roasting and there's roasting after baking. Right? As far as Shabbos goes. So somebody says, what happens if you have something baked and you roast it? So because there's roasting after baking, mean you're changing the process a little bit, so then they hold it's good. And other pus can hold it's not good, because the pearl is edible as is, and you're not really doing anything to it. Um, with tortilla bread. Tortilla what? Wheat tortilla or corn tortilla? Wheat tortilla is basically edible as is. Nobody eats it. I get, like, different It's not because it's, the, it's a question on the facts. Corn tortilla, we learned yesterday, is not an issue because it's made from corn, the brach shahakal, it's not pas, it's not mazonis, it's nothing, it, it, it's not a problem. But if it's a wheat tortilla that technically is edible as is, it's ready to go. All you have to do is put in some salad or curries, whatever you put into the tortilla. So. The question is, they tell you to warm it up for a little bit. So, so this is Shailin Aloha, what we said basically before. Technically, if it's edible as is, it's edible as is, you just warm it up to make it crispier. So a lot of poskim say it's not good. A lot of poskim say the way of normal eating it is to, heat, to crisp it up, so then it is good. So there's two opinions in Aloha. Some say yes, some say no. That's the basic what it is. It's still shahakol. Very spiritual shahakol.